Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you are doing good. Today is 25th March and we have decided to cover this topic interface python with MySQL. Today is holy and I know you will be busy with playing colors. So on this day, we will be covering one small topic. Wishing all of you a happy holy. We studied python, now we are well familiar with MySQL commands too. Through python program, we will work with MySQL. For that we need connector mysql.connector that we can install with pip install command. Here are the steps for the connectivity. We will be discussing it one by one. All the functions related to connectivity are in mysql.connector module that we need to import using import command. Look at the name. It's little lengthy. Then to make it simple and small we can give alias to it. Here is the important step in which we are establishing connection to MySQL through Python. For that we will use connect function. Look at the syntax. With this we will be creating one connection object. Connect function is from the mysql.connector module so that we need to mention. There are total four parameters. First is host. In our case host will be local host. The second parameter is user. For that we will be writing root. Look at the third parameter that is password. You will be writing here password which you have entered while installing MySQL software. The fourth parameter is database. Here we will be providing the name of the database on which you need to work. If you are not working on a particular database you can skip this parameter. Look at the example. This is the alias which we have given to this module. These two parameters are fixed. The password and the name of the database will get changed. Moving ahead to the next step in which we are going to create the cursor. The use of cursor is to process records row by row. To create cursor we will be using cursor function. Look at the syntax. In the previous step we created connection object that we need to mention dot cursor. Look at the example. This is the cursor object which is going to create with this command. MyDB is the name of the connection dot cursor. Moving ahead to the next step, we need to execute the SQL query. Now the connection between Python and MySQL got created. It's time to write the query and execute it. For that we will be using execute function. Note that execute function will work with the cursor object which we have created in the previous step. And the parameter for this function will be a complete query. Look at the example. This is cursor object. With execute function we are executing a complete query. Select star from emp. With the select command you know you will be getting all the records. You can call it as a result set. Now you need to extract data from the result set. For that we have three different functions. Fetch all, fetch one and fetch many. In the first function you are fetching all the records. With this function we will be fetching all the records in the tuple form. Look at the second function that is fetch1. It will fetch only one record that too as a tuple. If there are no records it returns none. What about this third fetch many function? Look at the parameter n is the number of records that we have to fetch from the result set. You will be getting it in a list of tuples. If there are no records, it will return an empty list. All these functions will work on the cursor object. Even there is one property associated with the cursor object that is row count. Row count will count the number of rows retrieved from the cursor. Here is the format to write fetch functions. Row count is a property that's why there are no brackets. Here is the final step. In that step we will be closing the connection. The connection which we have created between python and mysql that we need to close. Just like we do in case of files. Here also we have same function close. It works with connection object. Look at some of the example how to connect and how to work with different queries. Let's follow the step. First we need to import the module. In the second step we are creating connection. Third step is to create cursor object to process the records. Now it's time to write the query and execute it. 
here the query is show databases you know you will get list of databases with this query and using fetch all function we will be getting it in a variable data that we are printing look at the output we are getting the names of the databases in the form of list of tuple as we have used fetch all function here we are trying the second query that is show tables the code is same if you want to print the fetch result set one by one you can use for loop now look at the output here the name of the tables are getting printed one by one now let's try to understand this important query select star from table name step number 1 step number 2 and the step number 3 will always be same with execute command we are writing the query select star from employee using fetch all we are fetching the result set and iterating over it we are printing it one by one look at the data we are printing row one by one we understood the usage of fetch all function now what if i will use fetch one function fetch one function will fetch only one row that's why we are getting only one record in this example we are trying to use fetch many function with fetch many we need to provide the number of records that we have to fetch as we have mentioned three three rows are getting printed It's time to check out one more important query that is insert. Look at the first step. Here is the second step followed by third step. Now let's write insert query with execute function. Insert into table name and here are the values. Please note down this that you will be writing query in triple quotes. If you feel this is very complicated to write whole query in the execute function you can store it in a variable and then mention that variable in the execute function i hope you remember all the commands which belongs to dml for that we created one word uid update insert delete with this command we change data into the table if you want to save it permanently you will be using commit function with commit function the changes will get saved to the table permanently here we inserted one record if you want to save that changes permanently you will be using commit function that's why whenever you are using update insert or delete command use commit function here is the syntax it works with connection object variable from dml section we understood how to use insert query it's time to check the update query now here is the update query update student personal set city equals to pune where roll number equals to 104 note that we are writing query in a triple quotes provide that variable to the execute function don't forget to commit the changes the similar pattern we will follow when we are trying to delete here is the delete query delete from student personal where roll number equals to 104 execute the query commit the changes if you want you can print some message all right let's connect all the pieces of the code into a complete program in this program we are going to create a table and in that we are going to insert some data after inserting it we will display it we are now well familiar with the steps First step is to import the module. With the second step we are establishing the connection. Third step is to create the cursor. Look at the query we are initializing it to one variable. Here is the create table command create table product. The first column is pid, second is pname and third is price. Let's execute the query. Here are the two insert command with that we are inserting data into it. that we have written directly with the execute function it's time to display the records for that we are writing select star from table name with select command we will be getting result set that we are fetching with the fetch all function ultimately table record is stored in the data variable if we want to print the records one by one use for loop In this program we use one dml command that is insert if you want to reflect the changes into the table then you need to use the commit function that we are using here and always the final step is to close the connection hope you understood all the steps and how to work with mysql through python here is one more important topic from this chapter how to create parameterized query 
there are two ways to create parameterized query the old style is with percent sign and the new style implements the format function we will not concentrate much on this style we will be using format function but let me tell you this style also in short first we will be writing string string is nothing but a query followed by percent symbol and the list of the values look at the insert query here is a template string that is f then we will be writing percent symbol and followed by percent symbol we will be providing the list of the values or list of the variables in this way pid will get replaced here p name will get replaced at the second place and price will get replaced at the third percentage one thing we should note down here if we are passing string parameter we need to enclose percent s in a single quote out of these three parameters p name is a string that's why we enclosed it in a single quote here we directly initialize the values in this example we are taking input it is not a new concept it is related to formatting of the string that we can do with normal string too we are writing query in the form of string that's why those concepts are applicable here too now let's try to understand the new style of creating parameterized query for that we will be using format function here is the template this is nothing but a query in the form of string then we will be using format function and providing the values look at the simple example here we are using select query followed by format function the format function is associated with string that's why we are writing dot format look at the value 101 where it will get replaced for that there is a placeholder we will mention placeholder with the curly brackets let's understand that concept with one more query here we are trying to write update query update product set price equals to curly braces this is the first placeholder where pid equals to placeholder 2 it means we need to provide two values look at the format function here is the first value which will get replaced at price and the provided second value will get replaced at the second placeholder in the format function you can pass as many values as you wish now let's look at the insert query how we can write it here is the query insert into product values first placeholder second placeholder and third placeholder look at the second placeholder it is enclosed in a single quotes because the value which we will pass for the second placeholder will be string if the value you are passing is not string then no need to enclose the placeholder in a single quote in the same way we have written delete query delete from product where pid equals to placeholder 104 will get replaced there this is a important note always write query in a triple quotes if you will use single triple quotes it will be well and good that's all for today's video thank you for joining me today if you want to study something else and utilize today's date you can go ahead with it in case you have any doubt let me know in the comments below in the next video we are going to cover previous year questions based on interface python with mysql so until next time keep studying stay healthy i will see you in the next video